became the producer of my feature film, Atlantics. Um, we met uh, after she had discovered Atlantics, the shorts. We decided to make films together, and we. But before we worked on on this feature, we co-write uh, Snow Cannon. And Snow Cannon is a is a kind of a short who was a preparation for a feature I had in mind at the time, who was supposed to be the adaptation of a Norwegian novel, uh, very different from Atlantics, <laughs> uh, who was supposed to, 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 set, to be set in the French Alps, um, <coughs> and who's telling the story of a, how on dit, la toute puissance? The omnipotence, or the, the, the extreme power, the, la toute puissance de quoi, en fait? La toute puissance, euh, c'est l'histoire d'une amitié toute puissante. Enfin. Oh, it's, it's the story of an overwhelming or, uh, friendship. Yes, that, between, uh, between, I think so, between two, two, two teenager girls. And um, <clears throat> one of them disappears in a very mysterious way. And it's really it's definitely, again, a, a story built uh, around a disparition. And uh, and the sec uh, and the character who stay reveals herself through the um, disparition of the first one. So um, and I did Snow Cannon uh, in preparation of that feature, and it was a much more yeah classic approach. Uh, first time I was using film. Uh, first time I was writing a script in a much more. Yeah, classical approach, like telling a story from a point to the end, quite um, yeah, much more classical than in terms of process writing, and uh, in terms of in terms of shooting, I was really aware that shorts were also made to just try things and and and, and really and I my skills in terms of desire of mise en scène and and it, it's very wide. I mean, I I, I um, so it's 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 has just to do with what I'm, with the story I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. voilà. When you said, I want to come back to something you said earlier, you said um, three or four filmmakers were very important to you at the time, and Claire Denis was one of them. Who are the others? Um, I would say Chris Marker and, uh, and Godard. Okay. And, um, but also, I, I thought you were, but, at this time, then when I, um, in parallel of my short films, I would say that uh, my friends were mostly my inspirations. Like, uh, I mean, the, the, the friends who were making films by my side, uh, doing their own films, um, like Gabriel Abrantes, who, who I met uh, at Le Frenoir, who was definitely, um, a very stimulating friend and filmmaker to have um, in terms of uh, ambition, of uh, incredible creativity, and 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 um, Thierry de Peretti is definitely a, a filmmaker who we, we just grew up making films together side by side, and um, yeah, another other friends to Benjamin Crotty also. I mean, very differently, but and later. But um, yes, I think it's it's we, we, we often ask to filmmakers which like famous filmmaker filmmakers inspired them. But I feel um, that yeah, the, the the filmmakers that I've met uh, while I was making my own films had a very important impact on yeah. on challenge on yeah on yeah well. yeah. I mean, it's you know, it's kind of hard to define like generations and movements or anything. But I do feel that there is something about a particular group of filmmakers who are around your age who have a kind of, who often work in narrative but also are quite experimental in their approach. And I think Gabrielle Brandt is somebody I think of in relation to your work. Um, and also people who have made a lot of short films and kind of play around with the form um, a bit. Um, something I didn't want to ask you is, even though your, your your films up till now I think have been very different, I mean the short Atlantic is very different from the feature Atlantics, um, but there's throughout your work I think um, an interesting sort of um, 
way of of putting documentary um, and fiction together. I mean, people talk about this now as like a trend or something, but there's something I think, it's a really important part of your work to, to have this tension between the real and the imaginary. Um, and you see it right away in, in, in your first short, you know, and it's a big part of the feature, um, even though it's something that's very rooted in reality, it takes on the supernatural aspect. Uh, I'm wondering if you can talk about you know, this, this, this balance, um, this dichotomy between the real and the imaginary. It, it, it always has been difficult for me to talk about that, um, 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 to talk about that as a general gesture, uh, which crosses all my work, because I feel that each films are so, um, have a respond to a very, very specific, uh, uh, landscape and, and production uh, background and, and relationship to characters and and so each for each film um, the balance between real and fiction or document is is very comes from a very precise and, 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 and specific reasons um, but for the last film maybe for Atlantics the feature uh, the <clears throat> Also in, 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 in Africa, in Senegal, in Dakar, um, the the frontier between real, invisible, I mean visible, invisible, uh, reality, fiction, death, and life is 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 is, is, is a very very different um, approach than here. Uh, and so I was all, also I, I was it was very interesting from the beginning to to. What does it mean to to make a fantasy film in Africa? Uh, because, and I've, it's been confirmed when I showed the movie this summer to to, to a Senegalese audience, uh, because the film was released there uh, this summer, that they were not in front, of, they, they were not in front of a fantasy film really, um, and they were, and some of the the audience found. Some people in the audience kept telling me it's not a, it's not a, it's not a fantasy film. It's it's a film who really depicts our rea reality, our everyday life, our our our, our beliefs, our our internal tensions, and um, so even if I I, I, I grew up in, in Paris in Europe, um, and that uh, I my 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 intellectual, uh, artistic uh, influences and, and, and background are, are built by a very Western uh, culture. Uh, I think uh, my, my, my African uh, origins, and I don't know how to say my African, <laughs> the African part of me, uh, is expressing a lot itself in my movie. And, uh, and it, was, it, ha it has always been difficult for me to justify that uh, approach in my films because uh, it's I think it's also just a, a language maybe also from the fact that I'm autodidact and that I've always approached film I've always made films I've never I really never told myself I'm gonna make a documentary or fiction but to go back to to Atlantics um, I was very well interested by it. Uh, the, the the genre that I mentioned never came from the outside even though I had uh, Fog from Carpenter as a very important reference, or some Gothic uh, tales, um, um, or different sources in poetry or, or literature, and the, and the romantic movement. And me. but it was uh, it was always about a fantasy coming within the reality and being captured from. From well, from the real and just trying to show the shift between what you call real and and how it shifts to something mm. <laughs> to another dimension. And I think in the film it's 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 mostly about driving and circulating between different types of dimension than going back and forth between reality and fiction. It's more about. Uh, 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 one and one and one and same passage from a state to another, um, 
both um, about both, I mean, on a passage from another, but at different layers and dimension. Um, and of course, as as the film uh, has a very real uh, social, economic, political background, and it, it, it rooted in, a, in 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 reality, uh, it's just extremely important uh, in terms of. Uh, uh, I mean, it was super important to get the situation, the social, cultural, political situation and landscape just very clear because it's what it is about. Um, but, uh, but, um, but it's a story about ghosts, about being hunted, about how ghosts are taking birth within us, how, uh, and, and, and as a as a, yes, it's my English. Yes, I'm just going to ask yes, one more and then we'll take some audience questions. At, the, at a certain point when you were writing this film, you were using a title, um, The Fire Next Time. Yes. And um, which is a James Baldwin title. Mm -hmm. And in, in, in Mil Soleil, there's a, a quotation from Giovanni's room. So can you just say a bit about the importance of Baldwin to you? Um, yes, I mean, when when Baldwin when um when I um, used uh, this title for um, for the feature in France uh, it was like a couple of years ago uh, it was before James Baldwin recame at the front of the scene after uh, Raoul Peck's movie um, I've discovered uh, uh, Giovanni's room as a first novel and uh, and um, and then another I don't remember the titles but um, I mean yes James Baldwin is, is, is very important to me uh, it's hard for me to explain exactly why and, 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 and how it's just a, a voice that has always been central to me and uh, and in, for in Mille Soleil, I thought that I needed um, it's it's it, it's um, the two continent. Uh, I mean, the two territory uh, inside Mille Soleil or relationship between Africa and, and and France. I mean, Senegal and France. But I felt that I needed a voice from America to 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 really complete the the dynamic uh, the the three points. And that uh, the final voice about uh, about a tale about exile should be from a black American. Uh, and this, this sentence uh, I use in the Giovanni's room uh, that I use for A Thousand Sun is just one of the most uh, uh, illuminating, illuminated, uh, Yes, phrase I've heard about uh, the complexity of of this this look this location and and once again um, uh, I was talking to the, my collaboration with this author uh, Violaine Huimont, uh for the ending dialogues of Atlantics and it's there are some words that I will never be able to 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 make um, to I, I definitely need to to. Enfin, voilà, enfin, you, I needed Baldwin to to talk about um, about the experience of being displaced. Mm. And yes, for the next time, uh, it's very connected to the Dakar Spring uh, it, that happened in 2012 after the Arab Spring. Uh, it's really when this Dakar Spring emerged from a moment where I nobody I think could have expect this rupture coming from the youth and from a part of the people at that time. It was after the quite long period of uh, Barcelona ou la mort, which means Barth Barcelona or death, which is a phrase that the youth, uh, a phrase that was kind of the hymn or the, the mantra of a whole youth who was obsessed by going to Europe. And so after this very dark period, 
uh, uh, riots uh, uh, um, gave a huge and unexpected rupture. And it, it's when and how uh, my position of how to approach a film about a lost generation that uh, disappeared in the sea should be told by the living and by the vital force of the country and by the one who stay and by a young woman. And and so this is, and Far You Next Time just appeared like an evidence as a title. I think it was really, you know, a title is really, a, um, it's very musical. It really gives you a frequency, a vibration, a frequency you, you, you you have to, to keep in mind uh, because you know that you want the film to to, to reach that frequency or to to well, to stay on that uh, and so fire next time was really uh, my kind of mantra for the whole writing and uh, because it's a quite uh, guerrier warlike warlike okay. combative maybe okay yeah yeah I didn't know it was warlike okay. Um, warlike, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's yeah, I needed this warlike uh, uh, impulse, I guess, to, to, to find the courage to go through all that adventure. Uh, and at the end of the shooting, we found out that the title was not a uh, was not uh, possible to, to use in terms of rights, which was not um, a, a, a big pain because I I, I, I I found that the film was kind of displaced itself from from this world like feet world like uh, and that and that, and that I wanted the title to become more uh, mysterious and less um, maybe less maybe less world like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's take a few audience questions. Yeah, we'll start over there. It's a microphone. Yep. Microphone right behind you. I love your I love your I'll hear. Um thank you. Thank you. Uh, um hearing you talk about you want to say can I just No, you use the microphone we're recording. Um hearing hearing you express you know, uh, your question on the, how much was it documentary, how much was it real, and you saying how you really found the fantasy within the real. And watching the film and in, 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 in the narrative, it, it felt clear to me that, okay, that was scripted. Uh, however, there were so many moments in the film that I wondered, was that improvised? There was just this sense of, you know, spontaneity that went, you know, threading through the narratives, and when you went from one dimension to the next state, were there was some of that you changing the dialogue on the set, or how did you achieve that quality, and what was your process in 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 doing so? <clears throat> um, it, it's definitely no, it's it's definitely not improvised. I mean. Uh, there's on other films. Uh, um, I don't know, like for example, on a thousand sun. Even if it was very, very, uh, very, very structured, uh, I think there was definitely more, a uh, more uh, imp improvisation dimension. Also because the lead actor was playing his own role, but on Atlantic, um, I think. Um, the, 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 the script itself is extremely structured, um, but structured in a way to give a lot of um, space to circulation, sensuality, and yeah, mostly circulation. Um, and um, it has a very, uh, the, 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 con the construction took a little while, like a couple of years. Uh, it has a very both classical, like three parts of, um, structure, but also a lot of a, a very kind of a un jeu de piste, uh, <laughs> kind of a. Um, uh, uh, it's hard, no. yeah. kind, of, kind of a. A treasure hunt, a little bit. 
Yeah. It's, um, it's both very classical, very en fait, ludique. Playful. Play, playful uh, in terms of... Uh, I think we took a lot of freedom with my co-writer Olivier de Mangel. We both wanted, wanted the film to be very accessible. Uh, to assume a certain relationship to American cinema, uh, like an efficiency, uh, action, uh, really like, you know, this something that's really advanced and, and, and uh, but both uh, very uh, contemplative and, 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 and central and, and sensorial. And so it, it was, um, I, I really wanted the film to, to, to be able to hold all the different kinds of cinema I, I love and, and who shouldn't be and, and who can cohabit in the same film. Um, but no, I mean, uh, I, I would say that the most uh, vital, vibrant uh, and maybe sensation feeling of, of living and, of, and so that maybe you call improvisation is definitely brought by the actors by these people in the film who who are characters in the movie but who are who they are and who are uh, so special and so yeah so special and so particular uh, and which is a, a mix of a very very precise work in terms of direction in terms of what we what we've built together through the rehearsal but also a possibility to make them exist and, and express who they are. And I think that's, that's what <coughs> uh, characters not should be because, I mean, but I think they bring soul and, and, and life, a lot of life to the film, but in a very structured uh, story system. But it gives a lot of, of space to, 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 to life and to, and to, to them, to, 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 to the people I, I film. Yeah, over there. Hi, um, Mati, thank you very much for the film, um, for its beauty, Atlantique, so I'm speaking about uh, which the feature. Um, I'm going to try to construct this question and I'll try to keep it brief. I wanted to ask you, I found your filming of the ocean utterly beautiful. And I wanted to ask you about the ocean, its meaning, and also I, wa I watched your short Atlantics, uh, which I also found quite moving. And there was, towards the end, there was what I thought, without knowing much about Senegal, or Wolof, or Dakar, um, gravestones uh, towards the end of the short, or what I thought might be a gravestone. I, I could be wrong. But um, a, what, a, a, a gravestone, um, like a cemetery towards the end of the But it, the, the question is about the ocean, its beauty, but also um, the place. I was very moved, um, the last little piece from the feature, when the men reappeared at the bar and you saw them in the mirror. And you, and you remembered them from the beginning of the film. And um, I just wanted to ask you about uh, this place of remembrance, the ocean, and and how to construct a, uh, I'm saying gravestone, but I, I mean a, a memorial of someone, a tribute to someone, which I think you did through the film in a very powerful way. But just to ask you, it's a loose question, but maybe you could speak to that. No, no, thank you. It's, it's very clear. Um, <clears throat> I think... Um, I've been I've been uh, giving a diff not different but as you can imagine I've been entering to the to the, the the question about the ocean a lot of times but at the end um, I think that I could tell you that the ocean in, is a, a character in itself I could tell you that it's a symbolic of many things but I think that it's mostly um, I think my, 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 my images and my, my cinema um, also begins where my, my, where my words 
my words and my capacity to formulate things ends. And I think that um, there's something to come back to the, the period I'm talking about and which is all about this, this, this departures of, of that youth for Spain uh, and, 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 and their passing in it. I think that uh, besides all the rational, economical, social answers to, to this departure, there is still something that's in front of the immensity of this ocean. There is still something that, uh, and I think that's why I made this film, something that uh, uh, leaves me absolutely speechless and incapable of uh, not understand but measure is the is how is this uh, passage of act where a boy or a group of boy cross that immensity and, and go there and, 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 and jump into it because uh, I can understand the reason why they want to get there but you still have this immensity to, to cross and and it's a physical and a real act and it, it and this specific specifically did this makes me I don't I mean I I'm and so to confront the audience in front of that ocean is a way to share my own uh, incapacity of um, So, and uh, well, yeah, it's <laughs> short. Um, yeah, we'll go to you, ma'am in the red. Yes. Hello, thank you so much for being here. Um, as a fellow Senegalese, it's uh, an honor to meet you. Um, I run a website called Discover African Cinema that talks about the inception of African cinema. And, um, from what I've seen throughout the years, um, African cinema, particularly um, in Senegal, has faded quite a bit. I mean, it started off with uh, Usman Sembin and Nam Beti Jup as well. So I was wondering, what can what can Africans do to, you know, bring back the storytelling, particularly in Africa, and um, actually transcend an African dance, particularly in Senegal, to the world scale. Again. <laughs> it's a very loaded question, very general, but I was just wondering. Um, I, I, I did what I thought. Uh, I mean, I, 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 I'm kind of, I mean, my film is one of the, is my own answer to your question. It's hard to, to to give a, a general answer because it's connected. It's, I mean, the reason why after the uh, golden age of Af uh, Senegalese cinema, the reason why it all, I mean, it, it, it stopped and it got interrupted and and the reason why all the uh, theaters of, uh, uh, movie theaters of Dakar were sold and became supermarkets and uh, the reason why some young uh, Senegalese filmmaker uh, sh uh, directed some short films or even feature in French, in Latin War Love, um, the absence of, of structure, of, a, of a, um, structure of production, distribution, uh, <clears throat> all these um, fractures. Uh, all these, yeah, all, all these absence and, and fractures uh, in, well, uh, it, it, I don't know, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very complex uh, economic, political situation that lead, lead us there. And so now it's about to reconstruct and to, and to, and to figure out um, what, is, what it is to be done today to, to rebuild the, uh, but it's both. It's on so many levels. It's 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 first uh, 
on artistic and, and, and cinematographic level, uh, which stories, from which point of view, in which language, uh, and then and then there is a, voilà, another a more uh, product, pr production and distribution level. And, enfin, it's a big subject. True. Um, but voilà, shooting, shooting, writing, writing, and 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 shooting the film in, in Wolof was obvious. Enfin, for me, is a, is a, one of the one of the well, the, the answers to coming back to. Pop. I think the film is a, one of the answers for 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 my own possibilities. Yeah, I think we can take one more question. So yeah, we'll come to you here. Um, I believe you uh, you and your team said this was your first feature film. Um, I wanted to ask, I guess, just in terms of uh, this journey for you as a director being your first feature, can you um, just kind of give some insight to that journey, how that what that was like for you? Um, even for some of the actors and your producers, what was that like going from shorts, uh, medium, medium length to a feature length film? <clears throat> um. I, for me, the the most um, uh, the most um, huge difference was, was the the writing process, the difficulty for me, uh, who comes from a more visual um, relationship to cinema. Uh, I think the the biggest challenge for me was really the the, the time it took to build to to, to structure. Even though my original idea and vision was very clear, uh, both formally and, and and what I wanted to say very precisely, but bes um, despite that, it, it, it still it still took uh, quite some years to really have the story structured and, and exist. So it was basically about learning how to write. Um, <clears throat> about learning how to write this film, not to write in general. Um, but then, except that, for me, it felt more like a continuity because uh, all the themes and and uh, and 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 different uh, I don't know uh, approaches in terms of mise en scène were already, I think, experimented in my shorts. I think that, I feel that you find all my shorts in, in the in, in the feature. Uh, and, uh, and the biggest also change was to have so many, uh, the crew is, is, I mean, you have a lot of interlocutors. Um, People that you deal with. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so, um, but um, I did everything I could so it, it didn't become the first feature, and uh, and the pressure that goes with it, and uh, and the professionalism that is supposed to go with it that I I kind of uh, was uh, a bit uh, skeptic about too. Um, but also, I mean, try to get rid of this. Uh, big step, uh, like adult uh, uh, initiatic passage, you know? But also to, but still, uh, to me, uh, I have a very, uh, I think, uh, not naive, but very uh, first degree uh, relationship to feature. For me, feature is also to talk about a much larger audience uh, in a way that I, that, I mean, uh, I definitely, after Atlantic's The Short, wanted to talk about the same thing, but not only to a very, uh, um, um, to a very uh, cinéphile uh, assembly like here, but to be able to talk about the same situation to the to the world because it's 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 cinema is to me is uh, also about really um, addressing myself to a large audience. And, uh, and I think, uh, but staying myself, staying uh, close to my own way of telling stories and, and stay uh, 
faithful to the cinema who built me and uh, and and try to voilà, to to reconcile the uh, <clears throat> large audience film uh, bringing singularity and 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 and, and experimental uh, propositions of, of 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 telling stories and and I think uh, well, I, I'm kind of <laughs> but um, it shouldn't be it shouldn't be a, it should be really a, just a, it really depends on on how you build how the shorts were built and and and. But to me, it was more of a continuity, I think. We're going to have to wrap it up, but um, I want to thank you for coming. And Mati, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me.